chief of police, uh, James Shepard, as I said, himself.
where a situation really does happen to you and nothing happens to that person, you still got to see him patrol your streets every day. And that's the point I'm making. Let, let's say right now, we got, say we got 50, say we got 100 people in the room. And I stand up here and say something inappropriate. We got 100 witnesses and I am going to be guilty. Yes or no? No, not you. Yes, I will be. Yes, I will be. If I say it up here right now, and somebody in here complains, they go to Lovely Warrants, you're going to say guilty. Well, all I'm saying is, you put me in the closet, and he say I did, and I say I did, you cannot get there. You will not cross that bridge. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, you mentioned that there, there, there has been incident that a police officer was, uh, was arrested in, in uh, Pride. How many percentage of it from the police department that is in heaven? What? What's, I'm sorry, what question? The percentage. The percentage. Uh, how many percent of the police department's uh, uh, wrongdoing police officers are arrested and be tried? What percentage? I'm going to say in my career, probably about 3%. Wow. Yes, no. in, in terms of arrested and tried. Now, that's a whole other quality, folks. Yes, sir. I like that personal camera idea. Yeah. I get all that stuff. Police wear personal cameras. Mm. But all of them tell us. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of laughing on that point. Because I, I don't have an issue with it. But I know that the ACLU right now is looking into well, if we put the cameras on the cops, we don't want that camera on all the time. Why? Because they think it'll violate your rights. That's the issue that being discussed, not us pushing it. It's just one of those things that they're looking at. And I'll say this too. Um, some municipalities, Oakland being one, Detroit being another, they've gone to the cameras. I'm not the person to cameras. To be honest with you, it's something that we're looking into for the same reasons that you said. Because what they found is a lot of times with, with, with cameras, plates go down. They go way down. Yes, Chief Shepard, you said people are both looked at as, um, in the same way, like in a criminal investigation. But a lot of times, a layman and somebody who's professional, usually we, we're, we're before people who are not even of our peers, number one. And when they see a professional and then they see somebody from the neighborhood, the street, or just a layman, they automatically have this there's, there's not a, you know, there's, there's a tented kind of, because people are going to gear closer to someone who's professional, who's, who's a police officer, that, more than they would to somebody who's just a, so it's not always. If that's the case, then it's not impartial. Then it's not impartial. And I'll say that we have a case coming for me that two cops that say it didn't happen. And I have one person who says it did. I don't say because two of them said it didn't, that it didn't happen. That's not how it works. <clears throat> yes, sir. Way back. Um, my name is Drew Beeman, and since you brought up the ACLU, I'm going to speak to that a little bit because I serve as the vice chair of the board of the local chapter of the uh, New York Civil Liberties Union. Mm -hmm. And we are looking into that, like you said, but that does not mean that we have made a decision about that yet. No, I that just need to look into it. That being said, I'd like to point out a study that was just released by the NYCLU this year that says that you are six and a half times more likely in Monroe County to be arrested for marijuana possession just because you're black. Mm -hmm. Where the use of marijuana are exactly the same between white people and black people. I'm also going to point this out. I think it's safe to assume that people of color are generally concentrated in the city of Rochester. So we're, we're probably mainly talking about, generally speaking, the city of Rochester, mm -hmm. probably higher so than in the, in the suburbs. That being said, that makes me wonder, how can you justify in any way that, or, or even reason in any way that there is not racist policing methods being used? Mm -hmm. but it's by the, that's a study that was done by the Civil Liberties Union. So that's, I think that right there is, is painting a is painting a picture. Now, I know it's really hard to prove bias, and that's part of the problems with the criminal right. justice system that we have, is the proving of that. But anyone with common sense can see that when people use a drug at the same rate, and people of color are being 
pros mm. prosecuted for that six and a half times more. Mm. What, how do you explain that? Wow. Oh. I ask people in this room, whatever this say, when you're looking at the corner, boys, you want me to deal with the provision, not want me to deal with it. You understand what I'm saying? Because when we, when we enforce whatever, whether it's marijuana, whether it's cocaine, it is because we're actually speaking from interested in arresting people of color. When we address things, a lot of times it's because someone wants us to do it. Someone wants us to say, deal with those issues on the corner. Yes. And that's what people say. Why do you let them be on the corner? Or why do you let them deal with drugs? It's a razor blade. And you know what I'm talking about. That's the razor blade you walk on. Somebody wants us to deal with it, somebody doesn't. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, the Rochester Police Department is an accredited police department, yes, through the Division of Criminal Justice Services. Is it not accredited? We're accredited in New York City. Go ahead. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the, is it a standard that it's okay to hit someone in the head to okay. subdue them, and is that an approved, accredited standard? Standard. I can't remember. We said on radio. Who said that on TV? I didn't say that. I want to back up a little bit because you asked a great question. There's any number of tactics that we may teach our people relative to when they're engaged in the use of force. It may depend on what is the level of resistance that we get. If that, if that makes sense. It's the level of resistance we get. I'm going to jump over here to Mr. who said something that I said on TV. I'm going to make a correction here. I'm glad to have this opportunity. But is it what I was standard? That's what I'm asking. Is it being that you are an accredited police department through the Division of Criminal Justice Services, is it an approved standard training technique? That's all I'm asking. It was described as a, as a measure to disorient or distract. Let me, let me talk to this question first. It'll get to your question. Okay. I was asked a question by John Hand of the Democratic Party who said, don't you teach your people distractionary techniques? And distraction I did really or discretion? Distractionary techniques. Mm -hmm. And I replied, yes. Someone asked me, is that what he did? And I did not say yes. Mm. I did not say yes to the question. The key part of this distractionary technique, and I did concur that it is a tactic that we teach. Right. A distractionary technique may be any number of techniques. I can hit you in the leg, hit you in the back, elbow you. Anything to get you from being so concentrated on me not maybe put your hand behind your back. Yes, I was wondering if you personally, as a chief of police, have found it difficult to be a chief of police versus uh, other chief of police that have been in there, meaning uh, the control that you want to display and want to have. Are you capable of, of doing that, or is it because of discrimination behind you in offices uh, that is restricting you from doing the job that uh, mm -hmm. some people feel that you would do? Meaning that members in my community that are black are, are wondering that you don't have teeth to protect them, but some white people get what they want. Yeah. As a chief, everything that somebody in Washington Police Department does, the buck stops right here. And so as a chief, I'm committed to us doing the job in a certain way. And when those instances occur, that it is sustained, it is addressed. Now, there may be instances that information comes to me, whether anecdotal or through an investigation, that it is not sustained. If it is not sustained, I can't make that deal. But if it's sustained, they're guilty, I deal with it. 
That's my job. If not anybody else's job, I'm not going to worry about the union because I don't work for the union. And I personally haven't been in the union since 1998. So it's not a union issue for me. It's just a matter of what's the evidence, what's our process, what's their rights, follow it, to deal with it. If it's sustained, if they're guilty. Excuse me, Chief Shepherd, before we take another question. And just as a point of uh, reference for respect, I would just want to ask you, would you please answer this lady's question? It just does not seem right to move on without answering the question. She deserves an answer. Thank you. Anything that I do to you, depending on the circumstances, can be justified or determined excessive. Just like I can use this, and in some circumstances, it's justified. In other circumstances, it may not be. So for me to say it's not something that is um, accredited, I can't say that. But maybe under the circumstances that it's used, it may not be appropriate. In other circumstances, it is appropriate. So do you specifically train to hit on the head? Is that a specific training method? I think that's the question. You punch me in my face, I'm punching you in yours. Oh, oh. So I, I'm just saying, I can't say that. I mean, are there specific you distraction have right techniques? Are there specific distraction techniques? Or is it is that it's just whatever it takes to distract the person? You, you're asking an unfair question and saying, can I do anything to distract you? No. Is that a fair answer? No, no, I just mean, do you teach specific distraction techniques? Is hitting the book behind the knee a technique that you teach? And is hitting on the head a technique that you teach? I think that's the question. I don't, I don't know my, I'm not asking myself. Wait, let me ask you a question. Do you teach somebody to distract your head? No, she said it's hitting on the head. That's a hard question. Chief, we got a kind of stand up back right there with his hand up, his black hat on. You can stand up. Okay. Let me introduce myself. My name is Captain Wayne Harris. As of this Monday, coming, I'll be the commander of the West Division. So, I'm sorry. I'll, my name is Wayne Harris. I'm the captain, <coughs> formerly of the Northwest Quadrant, and I'll be the, okay. You know, I have an idea. Wayne, when, 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 you, when, you, when, the, when these gentlemen are, let's say, uh, make these positions, they should come to the clergy and be anointed. That way we can ensure that they will be guided and directed by the Holy Spirit in everything they do and say. Amen.
discretionary tactics? Yes, we do. Is it mandated by the accreditation of the state of New York? I don't know. But I can tell you that through our academy, we do teach officers to utilize discretionary tactics in order to effect an arrest. We also teach our officers to only use the amount of force necessary to effect that arrest. That's why the chief indicated that sometimes using a firearm in a situation is justified. Sometimes it's not. But however it happens, we as supervisors, especially in the case of using a firearm, are obligated to take a look to determine whether or not the officer's use of force is justified. Does the instructor say Hey, hey, hang on one second. This is in my view. <laughs> Hitting someone in the head is unjustifiable, period. Because we all know that a simple bump on the head, as an accident, can cause bleeding on the brain. Mm -hmm. So of all the places in the body, this one can't heal like the rest. So it may be that what we are, we're at a point in history where there's going to be need, to, need to be some new rules and some new limitations. Because it's hard to believe that anatomically, someone cannot be disabled in other parts of the body being hit than the head. We may be at, at a point in history where things need to change. There. Yes. When I was talking about being an intimidated and fear, it wasn't about going to jail. I've done that a lot. I've even volunteered this past year to go to jail with uh, Occupy. So going to jail wasn't about that. It was about the Jim Crow putting the fear in you, getting on the ship, and let's go for it. <laughs> for real. Uh, and I respect these lawyers here, but just know your rights. Know your rights is all well and good, but that is not applicable in the law. It's not. It's not. Reports 
submitted police reports, in part. My understanding is that the ACLU group, research group, that did that report came to Rochester and attempted to do a similar sort of study from our police reports. However, they were unable to conduct their review because our police reports are so poorly completed that sufficient information was not there for them to make any decision whether there was wrongdoing or whether there was not wrongdoing. So what I want to know is, one, are you aware of that finding? And two, what is your response to such a finding? The difference between um, NYPD and the Rochester Police Department is look at FIF, we call it illegal stops, we don't call it stop and frisk stops, was the fact that hours were on paper. And therefore, you could not search electronically or digitally for certain things. And that's what they want to be able to do is say, search in a digital database African American males, um, suspicious persons. Because you want to be able to pull that data out without going through files and files and files. Our FIF data, I think we just went through our new records management system in March. So all our data is digital. So that will enhance their ability, everybody's ability to pull that data in the way that they like. Because nobody wants to just go through those forms and read them and look for the, uh, the connections that you want to make. So then, if they were to come back, mm -hmm. they would be able to pull that data from March to, say, September yes. 30th. Yes, ma'am. Hi. All I want to say is that we forget sometimes police officers are human beings. I know they're supposed to be trained, but... You know, it happens. I mean, if someone, I mean, I know I'm not a police officer, but if someone came up to me and, you know, started to hit me, I'd, you know, right away want to do something back. Hard away. If I was pregnant with a baby, I wouldn't be doing any of that also. Well, sorry, I wouldn't. Number three, how many police officers are in Rochester? We have about 730. Okay, 730 police officers. Do we have 730 complaints? Yes. Uh, more. More than that. But let me say this. Let me close this question. I'm not going to stand here and say we only had eight complaints, so therefore it's all good. Because I don't want to think that's how we feel. And if I didn't want to hear what you had to say, guess what? I could be watching baseball tonight. So that, that's what I want you to know is that I wouldn't be here if I wasn't concerned. If I didn't want to hear what you had to say, and if I didn't, Feel the frustration that you get at. I understand. Let me close with this thought. Because I have to address Mr. Alex White. He brought up the fact of Italy being arrested after the media lives. And there was a reason for that. You understand that? You understand it, and you know why. Because when the event was done, and the people who chose to be arrested, Ricardo did one of them, there was only one person left.
And the attitudes among corrections officers reflects in mirrors the attitudes among the police department. That's no lie. Most of the people that work in the Department of Corrections as COs, especially in upstate New York, are all white. They come from rural areas, and they see black people there, and they will bounce on black people in a minute. But one thing about New York State is that they are transparent. They don't hide their stuff. That's right. And I'm going to tell you about two incidents. It'll be very brief. One time, a white CEO made a disparaging statement about let's get a black cake across the market for King Day. He was fired. Just like that. Fired. Another time, another white officer went off on a black inmate. Nothing happened, just violence. Fire, just like, just like that. And see, we want to know whether or not Officer Lucas Crawl, who committed that dastardly thuggish act against Brenda Hardaway, whether or not this Nazi fascist thug is going to be fired. That's what we want to know. That's what we want to know. Now, to answer that, ladies, Stop. 